Good morning. We're glad, I'm glad that you're here today. Um, it looks like we may be able to start meeting together soon, and I'm, I'm hoping that's true. And I want to encourage you to join us Sunday nights. We, uh, we have a Zoom meeting, and if you need the link for that, uh, send me your email or, or a text, and I'll be, be happy to have you join us Sunday night at, at 6. If you have needs or, or prayer requests, uh, please let me know. Uh, probably the easiest way to contact me is through our website, fbcbrisbane.org. And uh, we want to be a blessing. We want to be uh, praying for each other and, and meeting each other's needs. We're back in the book of 1 Thessalonians this morning. We've been progressing uh, through. It's, um, you know, we think of our day and age as so wicked, and, and it is. But uh, the Thessalonians lived in wicked days. They lived in a wicked town. And yet when uh, Paul came and preached the gospel, uh, there were people who responded and who trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I just wanted to ha have a little bit of review. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and, and verses 6, uh, he said, "Ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Uh, it, it was hard being a Christian in their, their day and in, and in their town. Then in verse 7, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Uh, they trusted the Lord. Uh, they turned to the Lord. In fact, that's the expression he uses in the end of verse 9, uh, how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven. The question I would ask you this morning is, have you turned to, to the Lord? Uh, that's the key. In our troubled world, uh, someday we're going to stand before the Lord and give an account. Uh, God had called them. God had given them the gospel. God is giving you the gospel, and uh, you need to respond to him. Well, his charge to them in chapter 2, verse 12 was that you would walk worthy of God who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. Uh, that's God's call for us. Uh, we're part of his kingdom when we trust Jesus, and uh, we live for, for his glory. Uh, in chapter 4, he says, Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. God wants us to keep growing. Now, getting saved is not the end. That's just the beginning. Then you begin to grow in the Lord, and we need to abound more and more. Uh, verse 7, part of it is, For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. We need to be living holy godly lives. And he talks about how we need to be loving each other and having a good testimony and so on. Well, their response, if you go back to chapter 2, verse 13, at least part of it was, he says, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Uh, their response was to believe the, the Bible and to live by, by God's Word. Uh, what a blessing that is, uh, to know that we have the truth and the truth can make us free. Uh, in chapter 3, verse 6, he, he talks about when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity. Uh, two key parts of our Christian life, faith and charity. Uh, Verse 7, therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. Then we saw last, uh, last time in, in Thessalonians that uh, he, he gave them comfort and, and encouragement there in chapter 4, uh, verse 13 particularly. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. As Christians, we have hope. Uh, we don't have to be like... Uh, those who, who live in, in despair. At the end of verse 16, he talks about how the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord, wherefore comfort one another with these words. And we looked at the rapture, how that the Lord Jesus is going to uh, take us out of this world, and uh, the uh, day of grace will end, and the day of the Lord will begin. And that's where we are in, in chapter 5. Uh, we've been saved from the wrath to come. In chapter 5, let's read starting in verse 1. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. 
For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. You see the contrast beginning here uh, between Christian and non-Christian. Uh, and he, he uses the expression there in verse 3, when they shall say. You know, the world has its call. They're calling for peace and safety. They shall say. Uh, destruction cometh upon them. They shall not escape. Then verse 4, but ye, brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Now, there's a difference between us and them. There's a difference between ye and them. Uh, a person who's trusted Christ, uh, there's been a change made in their life. Uh, they've trusted Christ as, as their Savior. Let me read on down, verses 4 through 11. I want you to see the context here. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. Now he comes uh, down to that conclusion there in verse, verse 9. God hath not appointed us to wrath. And he says this is a, a comfort to us. Uh, the, the day of the Lord is a, a fearful thing. And yet, as Christians, we don't have to fear the day of the Lord. And he, he talks about some of the contrasts here. I think this, this passage shows at least four uh, different contrasts. And the first one is knowledge versus ignorance. Verse 1, You have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Uh, they'd been taught. God had revealed that. They understood. Uh, the day of the Lord is coming. Christians understand there is a God. God has a plan. Not everybody looks at life like that. You know, some people look at life as circular. Uh, they say, well, just everything just keeps happening and just keeps going round and round. That's kind of the, uh, the new age or the Hindus, and you know, they include things like reincarnation. Uh, listen, there's no comfort that someday somebody's going to eat you and, and your life is going to go on through them. Uh, that's the way some people look at it. Others, uh, the evolutionists and those who leave out God and, and spirituality altogether, just look at life as a line uh, that has no rules and has no end and has no plan, uh, just kind of directionless and, and, and meaningless. When you die, that's, you just kind of, that's it. But there's a Christian worldview uh, that there is a God. And, you know, as Christians, uh, there is knowledge that comes from God. God has revealed himself to us. He's given us the truth. Uh, we know where we came from. And people often talk about the great questions of life. Well, listen, as Christians, we know. Uh, we know why we're here. Uh, we know where we're going. We know how it will end. We know what comes next. That's what he's talking about in chapter 4. Uh, we don't sorrow as others who have no hope. We have the hope of salvation. We have the God of hope as our God. Uh, the world is in darkness. One of the things they cry out, like he, he talks about there in verse 3, peace and safety. They want peace and safety. And by that, what they mean is peace and safety for them. <laughs> They're not so worried about everyone else. Uh, we understand, uh, like he talks about here in, uh, in, uh, in verse 1, that there are times and seasons. Life is not just by chance. We know God has a plan. Now that expression, times and seasons, refers particularly to, to Israel. In uh, Acts chapter 1, when uh, the disciples asked Jesus, they said, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Well, Jesus' answer was, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. They were saying, is this the time? He's saying, you don't need to know the time, you just need to know I'm in control. 
It's my times. It's my seasons. As Christians, uh, beware of somebody who says, I I know the hour Jesus is coming again. (laughs) Don't listen to him. Uh, God said that's that's not what we need to know. We just need to know that God's in control. God has his times and has his seasons. God revealed to Daniel the 70 weeks of Israel. And uh, what a a tremendous prophecy that was that God, God gave to him. And God showed us there was a break there between 69 and 70 of those 70 weeks. Well, that's us. <laughs> we're that break. Uh, we're, uh, we're the mystery of the Old Testament, uh, the church, and uh, the, the times and seasons that uh, God has are, are in his hand. Then he talks also about the, the day of the Lord. You, yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh uh, as a thief in the night. As Christians, we know that sin will be judged. The day of the Lord is a time of judgment. If you want some scary reading, uh, look up in your Bible search engine on your computer, Day of the Lord, and you read those passages. Uh, it, it's, not, uh, it's not easy reading. Let, let me read just uh, one, of, one of them to you from Zephaniah uh, chapter 1 and, and verse 14. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men. Verse 18, neither shall their, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. Uh, the day of the Lord is a, a fearful time. And when you look at the day of the Lord, Christians are not there. Uh, we've been saved, like he says in, in chapter 1, verse 10, uh, from, the, from the wrath to come. Uh, like he says later, or as we read there in verse 9, he's not appointed us, us to wrath. When you, when you look at the day of the Lord in Revelation, it's basically chapters 6 to 19. Uh, the church is not there. And uh, what a blessing it is to understand there's times and seasons. Uh, there's things that God is doing with Israel, things he's doing uh, with Christians. And he says the day of the Lord is going to come uh, like a, a thief in the night. Things are not always going to continue as they were. You know, those who believe that the world is a circle or the world is a line, they think things are just going to continue. God says, no, there's, there's times and seasons. Uh, there's going to come an end to this day of grace. Uh, there's going to come an end. There's going to be some things that are going to change. You know, in your home, uh, you don't expect a thief to break in. You think, oh, things are going to be continuous as they are. But every once in a while, something, something happens. Something, something changes. And God says that in his Uh, dominion, Uh, there are things that are going to change. Things are not always going to continue as as they are. As Christianity, uh, uh, as as Christians, uh, God reveals in his word. We can know. We don't have to be ignorant. And as a result, there's the contrast of expectance versus surprise. The world is going to be surprised when the day of the Lord comes. They're going to be saying peace and safety. Oh, we can, we can handle this, and uh, we can change that. And, uh, you know, you see it in what's happening today. You, you, you don't see great headlines saying, we need to repent and turn to God. <laughs> we need to believe the Bible and pray. People say, no, we, we need to social distance. We need the new norm. We need this and that. You need to clean your hands. And It's amazing how we think that we can just ignore God. Jesus used this picture in Matthew 24. You're probably familiar with, with the passage. He said, talked about how someone breaking into your home. You don't expect that. You know, the world is looking for peace and safety. We can work it out. Uh, many just I- ignore the Lord. It has nothing to do with, with their life. They're, they're too ignorant even to scoff. Uh, others scoff at this idea that, that there is a God. Uh, let me read to you from 2 Peter Chapter 3 and verse 3, he says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. 
That's the world's attitude. Things are just going to keep going. Things are just going to keep, keep the same. Uh, but as Christians, we're expecting things to change. We're looking for Jesus. Uh, Christians aren't uh, uh, looking just to make this world a heaven on earth. We're looking for the real heaven. Uh, we're looking for Jesus. We're, look, we're living like he could come today. In, in 1 John, he says, uh, Little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Uh, I would ask you this question uh, this morning. If the Lord were to come today, or if you were to die today, uh, do you know the Lord? Do you know the Lord? Are you expecting him? 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 says, that These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. That's, that's a different verse, actually. Uh, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. God wants us to know. That's why he gave us the Bible. We can know. Uh, we, we don't have to be surprised by what God is doing. We're looking for Jesus. It brings us to another contrast, that of soberness versus drunkenness. You know, there's, there's different ways that, uh, that people live. He uses several different expressions here uh, in, uh, in 1 Thessalonians 5. He talks about the difference between dark and light and day and night and, and then uh, awake and asleep and sober and drunk. Uh, part of that at least has to do with our conduct. There's different ways people live. The, the world is asleep spiritually. Uh, the world is in darkness. The world is in drunken behavior. You, you know, you see someone out there doing something foolish, and they think, oh, he, he's probably drunk. Well, the, the world is like that, just living however they want. But for Christians, look at verse 8. He, Let us, who are of the day, be sober. That word sober means serious. We need to understand that there is a God who, uh, who has a purpose and a plan. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. And God wants us to be serious-minded about the things of life. There's a, oh, maybe a parallel passage in Romans chapter 13, verse 12, when he says, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. You see the contrast between how a Christian should live and how the world says we can live? But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Uh, there's a difference between uh, a Christian way of life and a non-Christian way of life. Uh, he says, be sober. Uh, he says, really, live by faith and love. Uh, putting on the breastplate of, of faith and love. Two key areas for, for a Christian. You know, believing what God has said and putting it into practice in our life. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Uh, we need to live as people who have hope. He says, for an, putting on the, for an helmet the hope of salvation. Now he's not saying there, hope that you're saved. He's saying, put on, put on salvation and have the hope that salvation brings. Big difference. A lot of people, when I ask them, uh, are you saved? Oh, I hope I am. I'm trying. Uh, That's this the one I hate. I'm trying to be. Uh, listen, if somebody asks me if I'm Bill Bramlett, I don't say, well, I hope I am. I'm trying to be. <laughs> no, I either am or I'm not. If you're saved, you're saved. If you're not saved, you're not saved. And uh, we have, when we have salvation, then we have the hope that salvation brings. Because we have the God of hope. Now, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. What a contrast to the world. Uh, how we live, uh, what we live for, you know, what we're expecting, uh, what we know and believe. But ultimately, it comes down to this contrast, the difference between salvation and wrath. Uh, look at verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. In much of the world does not believe the Lord and are going to face 
the wrath of God. He's talking here about the day of the Lord. Listen, the day of the Lord will be terrible. I know many people have said, oh, the things happening, oh, they're, they're like things from Revelation, and oh, these, these are... Listen, this is nothing compared to what's going to go on in the day of the Lord. Uh, when you read about the tribulation, uh, the, the little things are worse than, than what's going on now. Uh, it's going to be terrible. He, he talked about it in 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 7. Uh, to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Uh, you know, what an amazing statement. Uh, the day of the Lord, it's going to be terrible for people. And uh, many of them are just going to uh, still re refuse to, to trust the Lord. Now, hell will be terrible. Uh, but uh, the day of the Lord is not talking about hell. It's talking about here on earth. Uh, in uh, Revelation, he says, Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. After going through the day of the Lord, uh, most, maybe all, I guess, will, will be cast into the lake of fire. Uh, what a terrible thing to be separated from God. Salvation versus wrath. Uh, I think sometimes we minimize this. You know, we forget sometimes that our friends and neighbors without Christ are going to hell. It's what we deserve. Are you saved this morning? Listen, don't risk God's wrath. Many people know John 3, 16. God so loved the world. And that we glory in the love of God, don't we? That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the end of that chapter, in John chapter 3, the Bible makes, makes this statement. Just, uh, I, I like to get it and, and read it so I make sure I get it right. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. See, the wrath of God, that's the day of the Lord, that's hell, that's separation from God for eternity. Uh, are you saved? Don't risk God's wrath. No one can be good enough to go to heaven. Uh, I've talked to people who, who think they're, they're just as good as they can be. Listen, God says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Well, there in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 9, he says, God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. He's talking to, to Christians there. Verse 10, about Christ who died for us. You see, the only way to obtain salvation is from Jesus. God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. Jesus is the only way of, of salvation. Salvation. You know, real faith in Christ changes your life. Sometimes you'll meet people and say, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. Uh, there's places in the world where everybody's a Christian. Uh, at least they think they are, uh, for whatever reason. But real faith in Christ changes your life. And that's what he's talking about in this passage when he talks about children of the light and children of the day. Uh, people who are living for Jesus, like he, he talks about in verse 8, us who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a an helmet of salvation. You know, God's uh, presence in our life makes a difference. We don't just go on in, in, in ignorance when Christ has taken up residence. You know, there's a great benefit and comfort in knowing the Lord. Uh, we, we talk here in uh, verses 1 through 7 how we can know we can have that assurance of, of knowing uh, God has his times and seasons. God has his way. And we can have direction for living like we read about in verse 8. Uh, we, can, uh, we, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have, don't have to wonder about uh, tomorrow or eternity. In verse 9, God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. And we have the promise of, of his presence. I, I love it there in verse 10 where it talks about 
uh, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. With Him. Uh, that's, as a Christian, that's our lot. Uh, he's with us. He said he's, uh, you know, he's knocked at the door, He's come in, He's taken up residence, He's made Himself at home. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ has promised Christians He'll never leave you or forsake you. Uh, we have the promise of His presence and His help. And we also, verse 11, He says, we can comfort ourselves together and edify one another. Uh, we have the, the help of other Christians. Listen, every Christian should be a part of a, a local New Testament Bible-believing church. Uh, others need your help. You need their help. And God does this because He knows life is hard. Listen, it was hard for the Thessalonians. Uh, it's hard for us. Uh, there is things we face that, man, just, sometimes you wonder, how are we going to get through this? Well, we're going to get through it with the Lord. God has His times and seasons. God has His purpose. You know, Jesus is coming again. The question I would ask you is, are you ready? Do you know him? God's told us that you can know. The Bible says it could happen any time. You should expect him. Uh, you should uh, be saved and live soberly and, and not be ashamed when he comes. The Bible says this in Hebrews chapter 9, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment... So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. He's, he's dealt with sin. He's not coming this next time to provide a, another way of salvation. He, that's once for all. And Jesus is coming. I, the thing I, I would encourage you to think about this morning is this. You have an appointment. I don't care who you are. You have an appointment. Is it to wrath or is it to salvation? You have an appointment with God. Is it to wrath or is it to salvation? The Bible says you can know for sure. You can know the Lord is your Savior. It's by faith. It's not by works. It's not by your heritage or your culture or ceremony. Now, this church can't save you. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can save you. And this morning, I would encourage you to, to turn to Christ, to, to know for sure. If you have questions, listen, uh, uh, call me, contact me, uh, let us help you. Get on our website, fbcbrisbane.org. Uh, the plan of salvation is there, uh, uh, contact numbers and so on. Uh, if you're interested in knowing more, uh, the, the key is the Bible. But as well, I, I'd be happy to send you this little book. You probably can't see it. Paid in full. Explain salvation and be a blessing to you. If you, if you let me know, uh, I'll send that to you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessing. Father, we are so grateful that you love us. Uh, Lord, we don't understand all about life and eternity, but uh, Father, we're so grateful that you've revealed the truth to us and that we don't have to be in ignorance about uh, how to know you, how to be your friend, and, and how to be saved. And uh, Lord, we're, we're grateful that you've given us your word, that we can know the truth and the truth can make us free. And I pray, Father, if there are those listening today that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would bring conviction and repentance and faith. Help them to trust you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.